Are you interested in engineering leadership? In this series, I'm teaming up with my good friend and fellow engineering manager, Jem Young, to share our experiences being engineering managers. In this episode, we'll be covering what it's like to be an engineering manager and how you might jump into it. I'm on my way to meet Jem in Oakland, and we're going to talk about what it's like to be engineering managers, why would you want to go into management in the first place, and then how do you land an interview? for an engineering manager role, and we'll give you some tips to show up well for that interview. What's up, dude? How are you doing? Uh, I'm all right. Good, good seeing you as well. You ready to kind of talk leadership? Yep, sir. Right on. All right, Jim. So... We've both been managers at Netflix. You're still there. I was also a manager at Evernote, then moved to Netflix. I'd love to talk about like even how we both got to management. You know, we both started off as software engineers, which typically a lot of people do. And then, you know, like, how did you get there? How did you move to management? What was it like? What are some tips and things that we can share with uh, people watching? Yeah, that'd be fun. It's always uh, good to recount our journey. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was at least I got to work with you a bit while you made the decision to move to management, which I always think of yours as a lot more thoughtful than mine. So I always appreciate how you approached it. So I'm curious, like what made you want to be a leader? Uh, you know, it's like you said, there's two paths to being a leader. One is accidental and one is deliberate. Mine, I was fortunate to be a little more deliberate in mine. One of the reasons I wanted to become a leader was I, I really like the impact that I can have at that scope, but I really like growing people too. And that to me is one of the more satisfying aspects of leadership that you can do as an IC, but it, it's it's a little bit trickier to do. But as a manager, you know, that's kind of my job, so it's perfect. What made me became a manager, or at least consider it, was I was working for a long time uh, at Netflix as a software engineer. But I realized there's this gap on the team that needed to be filled in terms of like project management or raising ideas to other teams or pulling in other people and kind of aligning on what we need to do next. And I kept doing that and doing that, kind of filling that role on the team. So one day I looked at my GitHub contributions and realized it had been at zero for like three months. And it, it really threw me for a, a crisis because I was like, well, I'm a software engineer, but I don't code. What am I doing here? Which, you know, it was tricky to work through when you hit that stage of your career. But uh, fortunately, I had good good friends to lean on, um, good mentors, uh, just people to talk to that they're like, you know, Jim, maybe, maybe you should consider management because you're already doing half of it. You like to, to work with people. You really like to build them up. And like you're already doing, like having that influence right now, something you should think about. And that's kind of what made me start considering management. Whereas before, I never thought of it. Never even dreamed of being an uh, engineering manager. Which I think none of us really do. It's like you don't go to school and you're like, you know what I want to be as an engineering manager. It's like you go into engineering because you want to build things. Yeah. I want to create something. You want to like learn the technologies and, and, and build. And as a leader, that's different. You're you're not building per se. You're involved in that process, but you lose that. You lose that touch that you had. And I think for me, that was that was tough. Like I remember making that switch, but it was also something that was super rewarding, like extra challenges. It's like dealing with people is a lot different of a challenge. And I, same as you, I love growth. Like I love helping people grow. And seeing them be challenged or like I'm giving them feedback on something that they need to grow and be better at. And when you see that click for them, it's amazing. Like it actually feels really great. And that's something that's a little more tangible as a leader because usually there's not a lot of tangible things where you're like, are you doing a good job? You're like, <laughs> I don't know, like maybe I'm not sure my team shipped something and it landed and it's working. That's all their work. What did I do? But I think when you see someone grow, that's huge um, to me is like really nice to be like, wow, I, I played a part in that. You didn't do it all yeah. because it's like a partnership, but it is nice that you're like, I was helping in that. Yeah. Kind of like planting a tree. Yeah. You know, you water over time, there's sunshine, but like, what did you really do? You just supported that growth, but you're not actually doing anything yourself. So yeah, I like that analogy. I like the analogy of that too. Cause yeah, like if you didn't give it water, so if you didn't give it any attention, it's probably not going to thrive. It might. Some plants don't need a lot of sunshine or, or water and they thrive. So 
it's like a lead, a good leader can help someone you know, thrive a little bit more. They can still do it on their own, but it's, it needs some help. Yeah. What about your path? Mine was more thoughtful and deliberate. Uh, <laughs> I love that you prefaced it with that is like, <laughs> I was more thoughtful, which, which is very fair. Uh, mine was not as thoughtful. It was like, I was thrown into it. Like I absolutely mm-hmm. just like walked in one day and they're like, Hey Ryan, you're now leading this team. I was a, like a lead front end engineer at the time. And it was a fairly small team that I was on and the one leader left or, or got let go. And that day they were like, okay, Ryan, now you have to manage this team, which was exciting at the time and also scary because it was like, well, what does that mean? And we were short staffed too. So there's the mix of like, do I keep coding? Do I be a full-time manager? What does this look like? And I don't really know if anyone told me what that was supposed to look like. So I kind of had to figure it out as I went, but I love the challenge. I mean, clearly I'd stayed as a leader for the past 10 years now because of that. And so I think that, yeah, for me, it wasn't as thoughtful, but I don't think about going back as an engineer. Like I still enjoy building things here and there on the side, but I really truly love being a leader. That's tough though. They threw you in the deep end and you sink or swim. Sink or swim, that's exactly it. But, you know, I'm sure I made a ton of mistakes along the way, but you quickly learn and you figure it out. So, Jem, since you were a lot more thoughtful <laughs> on you transitioning into leadership, how did you, you decided, hey, I want to, that's something that I might want to do. People think I'll be good at it. How did you approach that? What were kind of the next steps? Yeah, next steps are obviously, one, looking looking for open roles, looking around and, and saying like, okay, what, what are they looking for in job descriptions? Kind of reading through those, try to understand some of the responsibilities of what engineering manager would do. And some of it's kind of internal where I just observe more. So I, I look at how does my manager run team meetings and how do they do one-on-ones? Because these are things that are necessary skills as an engineering leader, but you probably don't haven't built those up a lot as a software engineer, at least I hadn't at the time. So it was kind of a lot of observing, learning, asking questions, but also telling my manager about my intent and saying like, Hey, here's something I'm interested in. What do you think about it? Um, unfortunately, again, yeah, supportive managers really solid, solid crew at Netflix, but that was maybe probably the more important part was like being intentional and telling people about what I wanted to do. I told you about it yep. and you, you went like way out on the limb and like wrote me a good promo, uh, not a promo, but, uh, you a good recommendation on LinkedIn about leadership and you gave me like a list of questions, what come up in engineering management uh, interviews. But it's that sort of thing. Like you got to tell people what you want to do. That way they can help you. I think that was probably the best learning I did before actually applying for any role. Yeah, I think putting the intent out there is huge too because also, you know, if it's your manager or even other leaders around the company know that about you, one, they can maybe help coach you, right? And kind of say like, here's some things that you're going to need to think about or even put you in opportunities where it gives you a taste of it. That's something I've done with engineers on my team over the years where they're, I think I want to be a manager. It's like, okay, well, we talk about what that might look like, but then also, you know, hey, maybe you help me with recruiting. Uh, Maybe you're doing more interviews. Maybe it's uh, even going up on stage and doing a panel discussion. Like, not that that's a requirement of, of an engineering leader, but oftentimes you're presenting or talking about different things and so I think looking for opportunities to give people those that taste of it can be really helpful and gives that experience too. So I think that is very, very important what you said of like the intent and putting it out there. But then also when, you know, a manager is like, I need to hire another manager yeah. under my, for my team. They're like, well, Jem has let me know that he kind of wants to do that. Maybe this is the right opportunity for him. And so I think putting it out there is, is huge. And I think that's one of the most important things. And like you said, even just watching or talking to others too and saying like, what's hard about management? What do you think about what, you know, because you don't necessarily always have insights into what people are doing as leaders. Yeah. I, I like that. Talk to other leaders and say like, what's difficult about it? Uh, it's good to go in with your eyes open to any new challenges, any new role, because you're starting at zero. Yeah. You might be the, the smartest, sharpest software engineer in the world, but you jump over the engineering management, you're back at the bottom, you don't know anything, you have to learn as you go. So the more you can learn and the more intentional you are going in and saying like, hey, I know I'm going to have these challenges. Let me try to prepare myself. The easier it'll be making that transition. 
Yeah. I mean, you don't know what you're getting into. You You really don't. (laughs) What was the biggest surprise for you as you dove into management? Uh, Biggest surprise. I I think maybe the biggest challenge was ambiguity. Mm. There's no one, there's no one to tell you if you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. You can ask people for advice, but ultimately it's your team. Your, your job is to be the one person in the world that cares about every single person on the team. And if they're doing well, they're connecting with the partners, things like that. And no one else can tell you if that's the right thing or the wrong thing. So I don't know if I was prepared for that level of ambiguity of like one day I'm a software engineer and the next day I'm a manager. What, what do I do next? Uh, and I think my manager was like, you should probably hold a team meeting. I was like, good idea. I didn't think of that. Uh, but he's like, probably sent out an email saying like, Hey, I'm manager now. This is what I'm, I'm planning on doing. Uh, and I like, didn't think of that either. So again, it's all that like building up this support network beforehand and making that transition made it a little bit easier, but definitely the, the ambiguity of leadership was something really challenging to update. Has it gotten less ambiguous? No, it does <laughs> not. Uh, that's the secret is it doesn't get any easier. It just, you get used to it and you yeah. become more confident trusting yourself in the decisions you're making and saying like, I could be wrong, but that's okay. Uh, and that's so different from code where you know immediately if you're wrong or right and you can test it over and over and over again. But leadership, you get one shot at things and you you hope your experience and everything you know is the correct, helping you make the correct decision. But yeah, it, it doesn't go away. I like what you said too of the difference between code and like leadership too is that the signals you get as a leader are less tangible, they're blurry. So like, yes, you are working on something as an engineer, you know, you, your build fails. Oh, okay, well, that's clearly not working. I need to, to address that and fix it. And there's a little bit more of that feedback loop to close. You have that as a leader too. Like absolutely, you could hear from peers how things are going. You'll hear feedback. You'll hear feedback from your, you know, your team. Like, hey, Jem, this isn't going well or this is. But also it's hard because each team member, it might resonate differently with them. Like one team member yeah. would be like, oh, I'm so stoked that Jem made this decision. And the other one's like, I'm not. Like, that's a terrible idea. And it's like, so that's really hard. You kind of still have to go like with your gut sometimes too. And you could be completely wrong. You're just going with your gut on what the information you have. And that thing, that can change over time too. Definitely. And I, one of the bigger challenges to that you can only get when you become an engineering manager is uh, your communication style changes. And what you say is taken a lot more seriously. And I, I, I mean, I'm not perfect. I've made so many mistakes. I, I, we don't even have enough time to recount them all. <laughs> but one of them has been, you know, I might say something and it's interpreted differently, just like you're saying. And people are one on one saying like, hey, I didn't understand what you meant by this. Or, hey, I was offended by the way you said this. And like, that wasn't my intent, but I, I just wasn't being thoughtful in the way I communicate. And that's like just something you have to evolve over time. And I think the other one was, Previously, as a software engineer, one-on-ones were more like casual and fun and just like, hey, man, what are you doing? We're, we're catching up. Uh, but now one-on-ones, like, you have to be intentional and like go in with, hey, I want to talk to them about this. I want to ask their opinion on this. Uh, it's less, yeah, it's less social time. And it's definitely more like this is a tool of my in my toolbox that I need to use and apply. Yeah, I love that too. One-on-ones are such like amazing signals that you can get too. Sometimes like you can go into it being almost too prescriptive and like, you know, trying to get at that problem and, and that's okay. Like, I think it can vary in how you approach those things, but then there's the times where it might've started a little more casual and something comes up that you're like, wait, wait, what was that? And you kind of dig in a little bit more. And so I think even stylistically, you can't run through the same playbook every single time and how you approach things. And like that to me has been something I've enjoyed. It's like not that ambiguity or not being able to, you know, do the same thing over and that it works every single time is, is kind of keeps things interesting. Yeah. It's also challenging, but. What about you? What, what were some uh, most surprising things when you became an engineering leader? Well, yeah, I'm trying to think back to that time. One was just like realizing I hadn't prepared, like I hadn't really thought through like what needed to happen. Where is my time most about, right? There's the time of an engineer or team member, like back when I wasn't the manager, it was like I was coding and, you know, putting in features, helping other engineers, doing all that. And I don't think I accounted for, hey, this is not my role anymore. I was trying to do that as well as be a manager. And that's not probably the right 
way to go. It, it might help the team in the short term, but in the long term, I needed to be hiring. I needed to be, you know, interviewing, recruiting, thinking about what's the future of this team. What do we need? Meeting with partners and stakeholders and really building those strong relationships. That wasn't something that I'd been as thoughtful in. It, so it took me a little bit of time where I had to let go of some of the actual coding and move into management. And so the transition was longer versus now when People ask me about moving to manager and I'm like, cut the cord as quick as possible, right? Yeah. You need to go and spend your time diving into problems that your team shouldn't have to and that you're thinking about those things so that they can do their jobs. And so I think that was a big surprise for me. It seems really obvious now when I say it, but at the time, it just, I didn't have a lot of like thoughtfulness put into it. And I had to learn that. And I made a mistake by not doing it sooner. And so you, you kind of live and learn and, and move forward. Yeah. And you mentioned the uh, time management is one of the key pieces to being a successful leader. Like, talk more about that. Oh, time management. I don't think I've figured that one out, Jim. I think it's something, though, that, you know, it's like communication. You mentioned, like, communication is something that you're always optimizing, trying to get better and better at it. And the bigger leader you are, the better you have to be at communication. I think the same goes for time management. You can get sucked into many things. There's, there's always tons of fires to put out as a leader. Now, a really good leader knows which which fires are needing immediate attention and which fires can burn, right? Mm. You're you're like, yeah, I, I'm going to let that burn over there for a bit. And I'm aware of that problem, but my attention is here. And this is more impactful for me and more impactful for the team. And that's a hard thing to do. Like, I think a lot of leaders, especially early managers, they try and do everything. And that's not really effective. There's certain things that probably was okay that it didn't get done and you don't want to burn out as a leader because you're not going to show up well for your team at that point yeah so that that time management is so important we always joke as leaders i mean i've seen you do it i've done it <laughs> others in the industry we joke about the calendar mm -hmm. packed jam packed with meetings and maybe that's your way of like letting you kind of internally know i'm doing my job is that i'm in meetings that's my job I don't think that's great for that time management. There's time where you need headspace. You need to be thinking. You need to just have open time on the calendar so people on your team can grab time. There's all these things that like managing that calendar and your time is important and it's really hard. It's really easy to fill it, but it's actually really hard to like leave gaps and, and not always be in meetings and really be thoughtful about your time. And it's a constant struggle. Yeah. Yeah. I'm number one complainer on Twitter about meeting <laughs> oh man sometimes like seeing the number of meetings and i'm like i get it right like you've yeah. got all these hours and then you're supposed to meet with the team you're supposed to read some documents or whatever it is prepare for a presentation that you're doing i don't know there's all these different things that you do as a leader and if you're in nine to five meetings when are you doing the rest of it right like Yes, you can do it in the evenings or weekends and stuff like that. But there again, you get back to the burnout and, and that is part of your job to do those things. So you need to bake that into the time. And there again, what's the most important fire? Where are you putting your attention and give it your attention? Don't let a bunch of other things like steal your time. Yeah. I still haven't figured it out, but you know. no, no, always trying to. And then you fail too. you. You yeah. might not show up to the right meeting. You missed it because you didn't think it was that important or you you let a fire burn too long and it you know you definitely learn as you go and it's never going to be perfect but you try and kind of manage it as appropriate as possible yeah yeah so jim i'd be curious especially because you were thoughtful in this and you know i just got thrown in but when you had decided and really put the intention out there you've let others know and you've actually ultimately i remember you doing this too ultimately making the decision i do want to be a manager you didn't put a hard timeline which i appreciate either it's not like i'm in one month, I'm going to be a manager. It was realistic. It was like thoughtful around that. And I don't think there's, there's no problem putting a timeline, but you want to be realistic about it. I'm curious, how did you approach that? Like once you put your intentions out there, were there, were you interviewing? Were you talking to other companies? Like how do you start getting interviews? Yeah. First thing I did after I, I made my intentions clear, try to build up at least enough so that I felt I was ready to at least try an interview was you know i started looking for roles definitely i looked internal first that's always going to be the best way because uh, comp other companies don't know you but hopefully you've built up enough of a reputation that people are like okay 
Yeah, I can see him as a leader. Yeah, he, he's already there. He shows up the well. Uh, he organizes people. He builds them up. So in, internal was like definitely first place I looked. But I also looked external as well. And I looked for roles that were in a domain that I was familiar with. So same language, same general kind of platform, UI sort of role. So at least I would be comfortable. I didn't want to drop into something completely unfamiliar like ML or something like that, that I would struggle to kind of get up to speed. And I looked for things that were open to maybe open to early, early managers. Some roles say that, some roles don't. You have to kind of feel that out. So I just talked to a lot of companies, really, and tried to get feedback on my resume where I could and listen to anything they would tell me about the role and try to pick up, okay, here's what they're looking for, here's what this company's looking for, and try to craft my story to match that in the future. I like that a lot. There's so many good tidbits there, John. Like, I like that you just also interviewed multiple places and, and all of you that as a like practice, right. And building that experience and like, how do you interview and looking for feedback too. I think that's, that's key. Like, like ask for that feedback and even asking your peers too, or other leaders, if you put that intention out, you know, what would prevent you from wanting me to be a manager? And the, like, hopefully they can be honest and direct with that. So that you're like, great. Like, how do I prove that, 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 that perception isn't there for them anymore so that when there is a role. I'm ready. And they're like, yes, Jam has proven that out and can do that. I love that. And I also really love that you called out the staying in your field of like expertise. Like yep. I absolutely believe as a leader, you can go lead in other areas. Like you could go lead an ML team, but it's a lot to figure out, right? Like you had mentioned, you're like, I don't know that. So at least if you have the backbone of like, I've built up leadership around, you know, even if it is front end and going to ML, you're like, I understand a lot of like the leadership principles. I've applied that, built up that experience. Yeah, it's going to be super new for me to go lead an ML team, but like it, there's commonality between it. It's, you know, similar thing that you're dealing with, but you can now learn that on the fly too, like a little deeper knowledge on like what ML is, if that's the example, but you don't have to learn how to be a leader too at the same time, because there's a lot thrown at you. So I think if, too, if you can find a role within the current team that you're in, that can have a lot of benefits too. There's pros and cons on that. But if you can, like you already know the space, you know, a lot of the partners. Uh, so I love that you called that out. Yeah. What you're saying is you want to minimize the number of variables when you're switching roles because you're already starting back at zero. You don't want to have to make that hill harder to climb, but it, it's going to be, because it's already going to be a hard hill. So staying familiar in the space with people that you know, uh, preferably at the same company where you know the culture and you know the leaders and you know the leadership styles would make it a lot easier. Yeah, I think that you, you said it better than me. So yes, yeah. that's like good summary of it. I think that's like a great way to look at it. Well, Jim, I think it's like we covered a lot of good, insightful tips on you know our experiences as leaders, but you know just hopefully giving some insights to people like what it's like to be leaders and maybe wanting to make that first jump. Hopefully, some of these tips are helpful. Thank you for listening, watching our first episode of Ryan and Gem Show. Uh, we want to keep doing these types of episodes. Uh, we really want to give more insights into what it's like to be engineering leaders. Uh, let us know how we did. Leave a comment. How, how, how was it? And then also let us know what are some of the questions and topics that you would like covered in future episodes. And don't forget to subscribe, like, all those fun things. And we will see you next time.